Hi, I'm Anne. I'm working at the University of Oslo in Norway, and together we will learn how to manipulate data from the earth science domain. So here I'm logged in in the Galaxy Europe main server. Uh, you can use any server where the climate galaxy tools are installed. Um, also, to start the tutorial, I will click left click on this hat here to get and see the training material. The training material is in the climate section. And this is the first one, this PanGeo key system 101 for everyone, introduction to XRE Galaxy tool. I strongly suggest you watch a video for the slides. This is a very short video. It gives you an overview of uh, what is Pangeo uh, ecosystem and uh, the XRE. Now we will uh, start really doing the tutorial itself. So we will really learn how to use these XRE tools in Galaxy uh, and uh, what they can be useful for to select data, get metadata information about earth science data, how to visualize on a map, for instance, and to filter data. Let's go through together. Um, as a requirement, make sure you went through uh, an introduction to Galaxy Analysis or uh, Galaxy 101 for everyone, depending on your background. Um, I will not go again into uh, detail for this uh, Pangeo ecosystem. You have an overview in the slides and in the video, which is a, a separate video. Um, first thing you need uh, to understand is uh, what data we will be using. So we will manipulate what we call NetCDF data. So NetCDF stands for Network Common Data Format. It's one of the most popular file formats in climate science. And uh, it's uh, not specific to the climate science domain, but um, in the climate science domain, in addition to this format, we are using a set of convention, which we, are, uh, we call um, the CF convention which stands for Climate and Forecast Metadata Convention. So this is really a set of conventions to name the data, to uh, specify the units and all the metadata information we need to be able to analyze properly Earth science data and climate data. The example we will be using is from the Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Service. So I really strongly uh, suggest you have a look to get some more information. Um, you have many different uh, data sets you can browse. Uh, this is very, very rich. Uh, you have to log in and register, but this is free of charge. Uh, here we have put the data in Zenodo to ease uh, and make it easier for everyone to analyze the data. We will be using the daily European air analysis forecast over Europe. So the resolution is approximately 10 kilometers. Um, and this is uh, one of the best forecasting model over Europe. This is uh, what we call an ensemble. So many different models running all together. And at the end, we make uh, uh, the best estimate of the air quality forecast. Uh, and the variable we will analyze is uh, a particle matter for particles lower than 2.5 micrometers, so very small uh, particles. And these uh, particles uh, at a very high concentration can really have an impact on the, on the health. They can um, irritate eyes, they can provoke asthma and uh, chronic bronchitis. So this is a very important uh, variable for uh, not only for climate or for uh, weather forecast. We will be using what uh, we call a four days forecast. So we have a date, which is uh, 22. Uh, December 2021. And from this date, we are taking the four days forecast. This is hourly, so every hour we will have a new uh, forecast. Um, and uh, we will analyze the data. So today, if you uh, go to the Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Service, you would be able to get the four days forecast, but from the date, uh, from the two days date. So let's create a, an history. Uh, and we will rename the history to Pangeo 101 for everyone XRA. So I'm copying this one and then I go back to my galaxy here. I click on the plus to create a new history. And then I rename, I passed, and then I enter. 
to make sure I'm getting the history renamed. Then I click again here on the hat to be able to go back to the training. Uh, and I will upload the data set we will be using. So here we are not getting the data directly from the Copernicus website. So this is a, a sample we have saved on uh, Zenodo. I'm copying here and I will paste it here with the upload, paste and fetch, and I will paste. If you really want to make sure, you can even select the format, which sometimes we need for NetCDF data. So this is why I'm showing it here to you here. And start. So it's green, so it will uh, um, start uploading the data into my history. I can close. So it's still gray, so it means it's uh, not running yet. When it runs, this is orange, like here, and when it's uh, completed, it will be green like here. Let's see what uh, are the next steps. Um, okay, so the next step is to add a tag. So this is very useful to add a tag into your data sets because they can be propagated into all the different uh, uh, tools you will be using later on. Okay, so it's running. Is still running. Okay, good. So now I can add a tag. So I here I click on edit data data set tags, and I will uh, use a hash tag and abs. So don't forget this hash sign in front of it. This is to be able to propagate the tag to all the tools that will be using this data set. Let's go back to the training material. We have done this part. Now we want to really understand the data set. So let's have a look a bit more. Um, this is already what I said. This is NetCDF data. You remember this is particle matter for particle lower than 2.5 degree, uh, 2.5 micrometer. And this is from the CAMS European Air Quality analysis. And this is a four days forecast. Now we want to get metadata. So this is a NetCDF data. It's binary. You cannot really inspect the data without a specific tool. So we will be using this NetCDF X-Array metadata info tool. So here, if you click on it, it will present you the tool here, which is very handy. And we can start to execute. And you see all the tags here, ADS is propagated to the tool and to the output of the tools I'm using because they are using this data set as an input. Okay, well, it's um, not starting again. Let's try to see what uh, is the next step. We will look at the outputs generated by the tool and then we will answer to the question so, what is the name of the variable for particle matter lower than? Uh, particle matter for uh, particles lower than 2.5 micrometers and the physical units. So let's check it's running. So this metadata tool will uh, return two files, two data sets. Okay, so now it's green. So the first data set is uh, um, a tabular. I can click here on the eye to see the content because it's a text file, a tabular. And here we see all the different variables contained in the binary NetCDF file. So we have this variable, which is the variable we're interested in, this particle matter. It's a four dimensional variable. We have time, level, latitude, and longitude. And here the numbers are the number of levels is one level 97 times 400 longitude uh, latitudes and uh, 700 longitudes and that's the same we have all the information for the longitude latitude level and time if we look at this info file here 
we will get additional metadata information. So we'll get all the variables and types and also their names and their units. So here, if we want to answer to the question, which was what was the name? So this is really uh, particle matter for a uh, particle lower than uh, 2.5 micrometers. And this is a uh, long name is mass concentration of particle matter 2.5 ambient aerosol in air. And the units is microgram per cubic meter. Um, let's go back here, a click on the hat, and we could check that this is exactly what we got. So it can be slightly different depending on the version of the tool, but it shouldn't be very much different. Let's go to the next step, which is to get the information on the coordinates. So the coordinates is like the latitude, longitude, and all the levels and the times, etc. So for this, we will use another tool from the XRE tool set, which is NetCDF XRE coordinate meter. So I will click on it. And this tool takes again a NetCDF file as an input. So here I can immediately click on the execute. And it will return a list. So um, here I will have a list with all the different variables and uh, co uh, sorry coordinates. So here, if you remember, when I clicked here, all the coordinates were uh, longitude, latitude, level, and time. And this is what we will find out here. Let's wait. Um, maybe we can check if there is any other questions. Yes, okay. So we'll have a, um, a question on what is the unit of the time coordinate? What is the frequency of the uh, particle matter for particles lower than 2.5 micrometers? Um, what is the range of values for latitudes and longitudes? So we have three questions to answer. It's running. And to answer to this question, we'll have to look at the files in this coordinate uh, list. Okay, now we have five items in the list, which are um, this. So the version is just to give you the version of the tool, of the XRA tool, which can be very useful. Um, if, especially if there are any issues, you can tell us when we send a bug report. And otherwise we have the time, longitude, level, latitude. So if we want to answer to the different questions, which was like, for instance, Let's go back here. If you remember the unit of the time for this, what do we do? We look at the time. Okay, and here we see the units of the times. This is in days and hourly. So we have hourly data, as we can see, and we have effectively four days of forecast of hourly data. Uh, and if you really want to see exactly the units of the variable, you can check here. Here, the variable is a, a time delta unit. So this is, uh, um, as we can also see in, in the time file, this is not an absolute time. As you can see here, the first one 
starts at zero. So we have a four days forecast, but we don't start on the 22 of December. We start from zero and we go up to four days. Okay, so this is why we call it time delta. Um, then we were looking at the number, I think, the, oops, the frequency of the forecast. So we said this is hourly data. This is what we could see. And the range of values for latitude and longitude. So if uh, we look first for the longitudes, So they go from uh, 335.5 and 44.95. So this is uh, not covering the entire globe, as I said earlier. This is only over Europe. And uh, you have uh, um, Greenwich in between, which is on the zero degree. And uh, uh, west Western longitudes are uh, on in the scale of uh, uh, over 180. We'll, uh, we'll see how to shift the longitude, longitude later. And the latitudes are from uh, 69.95. So this is quite up north. This is northern of uh, uh, Norway. And uh, uh, the longitude in the south is 30 degrees, which is also quite uh, low. Okay, so we have answered to the question and you can also here check that uh, indeed you have answered to the questions. Um, so now let's have a look at, uh, at the data itself. So we, we got information about the metadata and this, uh, these are the two tools you have used so far, which are the metadata information and this coordinates XRE tool. Now we want to plot the data on a map. And for this, we will be using this XRE map plotting. Um, and it will take a NetCDF file as an input. We'll also use the metadata information. And we have to select the variables we want to plot and also the time. Um, and then uh, here we can, let's use this. So you click on this one and you will have it here. So we'll take this. Let's see the data here. You have to change and make sure you are using this metadata information. You need to select the variable. So the variables we want to select is this particle matter. We have to select the variable for the latitude, which is latitude and the variable for the longitude. Uh, and we want to select the time because we have a four days forecast. And here we only want to plot one time. Um, and uh, I don't remember which one we can probably take the first one. So this is the first, the first uh, uh, time we have in the data set. So here we will select time for the variables. Um, and here you can select and we'll click only on the first one to start with. So the longitude values, uh, this is if you want to make a, a, another selection for the smaller geographical area, but we won't do that. Uh, shift longitude. So here we will uh, shift the longitude. Why? Because we want to plot over Europe. Uh, and for now, the data is over uh, 0 and 360. And if we leave it this way, we'll have a, a one line, blank line in, in the middle at 0 degrees. So. Um, and this is because the last, uh, so the, the resolution we have is approximately 10 kilometers. So we, we have a, a gap in the data. So the range of values to plot, this is a minimum and maximum value. So I think we can probably select some uh, like 0 and 35 as here. Um, so this is to make sure we can see uh, on, the, on the plot. Mm, we can add the country border, so I don't remember what we specify here for the country border. We can uh, add 0 0.2, 0 0.5. Um, so here I can do the two. This is to have the borders, the countries, and the coastline. Um, we don't really need the, the land. This I don't need. A plot title, we can specify a plot title, but this is uh, otherwise not necessary. 
it will uh, specify a default title and uh, the color map. So here we will use Roma and underscore R, uh, which is a, a nice uh, color scale for this uh, type of uh, data. Uh, and for the projection, I think we don't specify. Oh, yeah, okay. We specify your projection, and here I will copy this first, and I will explain. So this is to specify on uh, how to project the data on a map, because the data is on latitude, longitude, and to be able to see properly. Um, here we will use a, a Mercator projection and uh, centered on the 12 degrees longitude. So you can check all the different projections, for instance, on searching for Cartopi projection. Uh, and you will have all the lists you can use. So you see this will show you the data, but uh, from a different projection. Uh, and I will execute. Again, it will provide me a, a map plot list. Um, and uh, you will have, uh, depending on how many times you are plotting, you will have one or more uh, plots. So here we are, we have chosen to plot one time only. So we'll have only one in, uh, in this uh, list. If we go back here. Um, so we should uh, have something like that, we'll, uh, we'll see. Uh, and again, uh, why we shift the longitudes? This is because the longitudes were coded between 0 and uh, 360 degrees. I mean, uh, not exactly between 0 and 360, because we are only over Europe, um, but using this uh, scale. And uh, uh, we want only to see what is over Europe, and the zero degree is over here uh, at Greenwich. So we, we will have one part between zero and 180, and the other part with negative longitude. So we need to uh, shift and make sure the plotting is correct. Then we'll have a, a, to answer a question, which is to make the same plot, but this time to visualize the forecast for the 24th December at 12 UTC. Okay, so let's have a look. Yeah. Let's try. And again, every time you always have the solution to explain you how to do. Okay, let's go back here and see the plots. So here we have one plot. And here it is. You have your plot. Ah, I forgot, um, and this is, is uh, what you can see. I forgot to put the country borders, actually, which we could check. Um, hmm. I add country borders, but they are not really visible, so I should probably put them a bit uh, darker. Um, Anyway, we'll do the same plot, but this time we'll change the time. So instead of taking um, the time which is here on the first day, we'll uh, take on... So what do we want to take? We have the 22 of December, which is the first time. And what we want is the 24th December. So how do you go from 22 of December to 24? And the first time is 00. zero. So we need to take um, two days later, because we are on the 22nd, on the, on the first at 00. zero. Uh, and we need to take a 12 UTC. So let's go back here. So I, we use this um, um, small arrow here to rerun the job, but I will modify. I will take exactly the same here, but I will choose another time here, which is two days. Oops, one, two. Okay, two days and at 12. Two days and 12. Okay, and let's run. And I will put 
country's border a bit more. Um, or maybe I put 0 0.2 for the countries. We don't need to have the countries uh, themselves too strong, but the cost line would be better if we can see them a bit more. So I click here, I may execute. Then I need to go back to the Panju here to my history to get my uh, my tools. I have to wait. So. It's probably not running yet. No, I have to wait. Okay, so it's running. Okay, so it's done. So now let's compare if we look at uh, um, here. Uh, so you see, we see a lot more the coastline, which is uh, very handy. So here we have quite high concentration. So it's uh, a bit higher than uh, 35 um, microgram per, per meter, cubic meter, meters. Um, and if you wanted to compare with the other one, uh, which is the one we have here, if we go up. So there are quite changes, a lot of changes. So the units are the same because we, uh, if you remember uh, in the tools, we specify, we wanted to have the values between 0 and 35. And this is to make sure every time we plot, we have the same scale. Uh, so here we see this is cleaner in some areas, uh, but this is very strong over, um, I mean, over the same region actually, which is uh, the Alps here and the north of uh, Italy. So it's always very high concentration here. Uh, and they are stuck on the mountain. Okay, let's go back here. So we see some uh, differences. And it's uh, uh, now getting to the next one. So here what we have learned, we have learned to uh, get some metadata information, we then have learned how to get the, uh, to plot on a map and to select a different time for plotting. But now we will make some more advanced selection. So subset from the coordinates. So what we call coordinates, if you remember, we uh, in our case, we have the time, we have the level and the latitude and the longitudes. So what we will be using here is another tool, which is a NetCDF XRA operation tool, which is a very powerful tool to be able to select um, slices so for instance, we can select different times, uh, but we can also select a different geographical area, etc. So the first thing we'll be using here is uh, very similar to what we did before, uh, but this time we will uh, add a filter. So we are using this X-ray operation and we will slice the time to get only uh, the first 24 hours. Mm, and we will then rename the data set. So let's do that. Okay, here you can take several data sets. I'm taking only one. Metadata information, you always select your metadata. Uh, select the variables. I want to select the concentration. Um, don't choose to select anything else, but uh, I want to subset by coordinates, so I will click here on the I to make it visible. Uh, and I will uh, select values from uh, the list. So I will make a selection. Uh, so what uh, did we see here? We need to select those, uh, the time. Okay. 
between zero and uh, and this. So let's take the time from the list. Um, and we'll select time. Uh, and we select the time values here. And we want to have a slice and zero and one. Day. So when we take zero and one day, the first one will be included. So we'll have all the values between zero and one day, but this last one will not be included. So this is something to remember. So here we'll have, uh, because it's, we have hourly data, we'll have the forecast from uh, the first uh, day, which is on the 22 December 2021, and we'll have hourly data until the 22 December at 23 hours UTC. And then I can execute. Then we'll, uh, once this is done, we will use uh, this coordinate info. And what we want to verify in is how many data uh, times we have in the data set. So if you remember when we did initially with this info file, if I, uh, if I click on, on it, or if I click on the time, let's click here instead, this is easier. You remember I had 97 data rows, so from zero to 96. So now we have selected data only times between uh, zero and 23 hours. This is hourly data. So we should have much less, but we have to check. So this is what we will do afterwards. Ready? So this is uh, uh, returning um, another net CDF data, uh, which means we can use all the, the different tools we have used earlier to get metadata, but also to visualize. Okay, so here it is. Let's go back here. And we will use this uh, NetCDF XRE coordinate info tools. We have used it before. And this one takes a NetCDF data. Um, I think maybe we, we want to uh, rename the data set beforehand. It will be much more easier later on. So let's rename um, this. Oops. Um, don't forget to rename this. This is here. Sorry. If I go back here and I want to rename, so for this, I click on the edit attributes and I change the name and I save. Okay, so now it is. Then I can go back here and I will use this XRA tool coordinate tool. Okay, and this is the right file, I can execute. Very nice citizen science project. So while it is running, we can try to answer here and help. Uh, sometimes here I cannot see, you can identify if this is like a male or likely female. I don't know. So 
I would say likely an angular. I cannot see. Okay. I cannot see, honestly. This is like angular. Okay, so now it's done and we have uh, all the different coordinates values. So if I click on the time, here it is. I don't have all the values I had before because I made a selection. I only selected 24 hours. So I have only 24 rows. So from 00, zero oops, and to, uh, if you remember, the slice was up to one day. And uh, uh, the last value is not included. So this is why we have only the 23rd hour here. Good. So this is perfect. We are good. So now uh, what we want to do is to use exactly the same tool, but this time we want to select uh, data, but over only one region. So um, we will be using a selection and uh, making plots of the particle matter uh, for this uh, particle lower than 2.5 micrometer over Italy for latitudes 43 and 40, so this is over Italy, and uh, uh, longitude 11 est, east and uh, 15 east. So, and the question is, can you tell us if the forecasted particle matter will increase or decrease during the next 24 hours? So here, what does it mean? It means um, we will make a lot of different selection. Let's try to start from this one, we will use this X array and we can select which file we want to select. Um, so we can, we can uh, take the first one here if we want. Uh, so the metadata info, which is this one, as usual, we want to select variable, yes, because we want to select this particular matter. Um, then we want to subset pair coordinate, yes. Uh, and we will take the data from the list, yes, and we'll select the variable. So there are different things we want to select. We want to select uh, uh, um, So we want to have the dates between 10 UTC and 5 PM UTC. So we need to select the time, oops, time. Um, and here we select the times and we need to select the slice. Uh, so we want 10 and you remember 18 um, because you, if you remember the last one will not be included and 4340 so we'll add another filter but this time it will be uh, uh, latitude and for so for latitudes it's a bit tricky uh, because this is what we have here for the slice the slice where we select needs to be exactly in the same order we have in the data so in the data uh, if you remember if we go back here if we take the latitudes They go from 69 to 30. So it's uh, decreasing. So we need to provide the slide exactly in the same order. So let's just go back here. Um, 
Okay, so maybe we need to again take the tool. Sorry, so let's get it here. Okay, and we take this one. You remember, we take metadata here and we select. Then we add a subset per coordinate and we start with oops, the time. Time and we take the time and slice between zero, but this we want 10 and 18. Then we add another filter because we want to select on the latitudes and we take the latitudes and the latitudes will uh, take a selection between 43 the slice three okay yes so we can even type 43 dot yeah zero five and 40 dot zero five uh, and now we filter on the longitude Uh, and we take a slice uh, and here we take between 11.05 and 15.05 uh, and uh, that's it so we have selected over the time and the geographical region so we can click on execute So we are at uh, uh, this question. So we do exactly the same. Uh, and to be able to see something, we will make a map. So we'll have to, uh, to see all the different steps we need to do to, uh, to make a map. So it's a bit like a summary exercise. It's, uh, it's running now. A good uh, habit will uh, rename to be much easier. And here I will rename to uh, this camps particle matter and I put the date, which is the date of uh, uh, the start. So the 22 December 2021. And this is over Italy and this is between 10 and 17 UTC. And I can save. Okay, so now I will uh, do all the different steps to be able to, to plot. Um, so I can use uh, Xari. So here I also show you how to search. We can search for the Xari and uh, we can do the metadata information. So metadata, uh, it will give us all the metadata, but at a very high level. So all the dimensions of the variable, name of the variables. So I can click here. And then the second one, we will use coordinates. So this is also to get metadata, but it also gives the content, so the values of the coordinates. So we can start to search. We have it here. Um, coordinates, yeah. And actually, we can already run it, because if you remember, it only takes as an input the netcdf file. So now uh, the next step will be to make a visualization, but here we want to see all the evolution so between the um, 
0, 0, um, and uh, 5 UTC. So we'll uh, make the plots for all the times. We can select here the plot. Uh, and we'll take here this input file. So we'll always check if you have the right one, the metadata information. We want to always plot the same variable. Actually, we have only one plot variable we can plot. The name of the latitude, uh, the name of the longitude. Uh, time selection, yes. Time. So we need to click the times. And here we will select all the times because we want to plot everything between 10 and 5, 10 a.m. and 5 UTC in the afternoon. OK. So uh, always good to put a range if uh, you remember. Uh, between 0 and 35. So then we always have the plots within the same scale. Uh, then we can add some country border. Um, we never add a lot, but the coastline, this is between 0 and 1. So we can add 0 6 to have the coastline quite strong. And the rest, we don't really need. You can always choose a, a, a title, a plot for, for your plot. So I, um, again, you want may want to use uh, projection, so I copy the same one as uh, we did we used earlier, uh, and again the same color map, which is uh, nice and uh, uh, useful for this uh, variable, and I execute. It's running. Okay, so now it's done. So we have eight items, so we have eight plots. So it's not very handy to visualize the plots one by one. So this is the region of Italy we are uh, interested in. Um, and this is uh, uh, here in Apple or on Apple, if you know where is uh, in Apple. Naples. Uh, but to make it easier, uh, to be able to compare all the different plots on one single plot, what we will do, I go back here, we'll make uh, what we call a montage. So we will put and aggregate all the plots all together. So here I will enter the name of the tool, image, montage. Okay, okay so we have image, convert, image, montage, this one.
and I will take the last one. So this is set two. Yeah. How many images we want to have? Uh, how many columns? So here we'll take four, I think four. We can leave it as is. So we'll have only one image at, with all the different uh, images we created in the map plots, much easier to analyze. Okay, so this is it. And I can already check, this is PNG format. Okay, so here you see you have all of them. So we can even download it. Um, and visualize it with on your laptop so it's scanning so you can use so this is all the different plots we can make it much larger i can zoom a bit uh, you want to see. So um, let's maybe have a look also to the part of Italy we are looking at. So here, this is Italy, but we are looking at this region here. Remember, uh, you can make it even larger. This is a small, we have an island here. This is here. You see? So this is really as the region of Naples we are looking at. Um, and uh, we can see all the different uh, times. Um, so you can also zoom to see the different times. Here we are at 11. And uh, here we have 12, etc. So um, let's go zoom out. So this is a 10 and uh, this is 11, 12, etc. And the last one is this one here. Um, so there are some changes. If we look here, this is the beginning of the day at 10 o'clock and this is the last time at 5 UTC in the afternoon. Um, so we, uh, we can see uh, that is changing slightly. So here it's always very um, high, um, relatively high concentration here around the region of Naples, um, and uh, it tend to spread. So here we uh, we had the concentration all along here and here, and this is the same here. Now it's slightly decreasing in this area, but it's going a bit more south. And this is moving in the south and slightly moving and uh, going again very high. So um, we can't really see there is a specific pattern. Um, we can see there are some changes and some uh, spread in the southeast direction by the end of the day. But uh, um, I mean, this is not uh, very uh, big changes. We can see here higher concentration and here. Okay. So let's go back. I uh, can also close here, which I was showing. Um, and uh, so here with this, we have done. The last uh, step we will uh, uh, be uh, learning is uh, what uh, we call wear statement. So, so far, the filters we made was for over a coordinate value. 
So we uh, filtered over time, uh, we can filter over latitude, longitude and levels if we had different levels, but here we have concentration at the surface, so we have only one level. But now we want on also to filter, but directly on the values we have here. So for instance, we would like to mask uh, some values, so for instance, those that are either too low or too high to uh, be able to highlight a bit more uh, some information. So we'll be using the same, let's go back to the tutorial, um, we will be using the same plot as we did before, but uh, we will mask values that are too small or we will only highlight values that are greater than 30 micrometer per uh, cubic meter, micro, micro meters, yes. Uh, and for this, we are using exactly the same as we did before, but we will add one filtering. This is to only plot value uh, greater than 30. So uh, here, do not plot value below this threshold. So let's do that. We are taking the same here, we did, uh, which is this plot here. So for being able to rerun it, you can, for instance, get this tool version and you click here on run this job again. We'll have all the parameters, so this is easier, easier for us. We don't have to rerun it completely. Uh, actually, that's uh, here. And here, what we want is to do not plot value, okay, below this threshold, and we'll put 30. And the rest will keep as is. And we run. So now, if we go back to uh, the training material here, so here, this is what uh, um, an example will look at the values for zero days, so the first time. Um, but in fact, we are. Uh, we run all the times between 10 and 5 UTC. So we'll be able to answer to the question using the same geographical area region of Italy. Can you tell us if the forecast PM 2.5 will exceed 30 micrometer per cubic meters between 10 and 5 UTC on December 2022 and 2021? Uh, and for this, we go back here, we look, we could look at all the different values one by one. So you see, we have some values or some areas around Naples that have a, a concentration greater than um, 30. We can do the same montage than before. Uh, so we can rerun this task here, for instance, but instead we'll change we'll take the latest one it will be easier we'll have all the plots all together and this is where we'll actually uh, see a lot more than uh, before on the spread of our different region because it was not very obvious before running Okay, so now we have it. As earlier, we can download it. I mean, we can also see 
um, but this may not be very easy to spot. Okay, here we see there were at some point no values, and again we have more values. So when you uh, this uh, selection over the values to uh, mask some values, this uh, allows to um, identify region a car, for instance, quicker than some values are lower. So here we see a lot more where we have values greater than 30. Okay, so let's close it, go back to the training material. So we did this one, and uh, so then we can see exactly where the values are greater than 30 uh, micrometer per cubic meters. The last thing we will see is um, to create some time series. So here we are selected over a region. Uh, now we will uh, make sure we can select only one value. So we'll use exactly the same tool initially, which is the XRA tool, uh, and we'll make the very same selection we did before but um, we'll uh, select only one value. So we'll select data over Naples. So we'll uh, uh, um, latitude north of uh, 40, that, uh, 85 approximately, and uh, 1426 east. Um, in terms of time, we can select all the time. So here we only make a selection with the X-ray operation over the entire period of time. Let's do that. So we make sure we take as an input uh, the first file. We select the metadata, so we have to go back. We select the variables. Oops. Uh, we want to select by coordinate, so we want to select from list, and we want to select um, latitude. We take latitudes and we slice. So we want to take a slice between 40, for instance. So there are different ways to do it. Either you can take a slice or you can take a value. It uh, really depends. So here, if we take uh, um, between 1495 and 1485, we have uh, only one value. Because this one, if you remember, when we slice, it's not included and the resolution is uh, 0 0.1 degree. Uh, we can do the same for the longitude. And you could, uh, instead using this slice, you could take this value. Uh, longitude, and uh, make sure we take the right longitude, the first one. And we can slice, uh, and we can take a longitude between 14.25 and uh, oops, no. 14.35. It and we want to take all the time, so we select. So here we will have again an HCDF file. Um, we will rename it so it's easier to identify. We'll put uh, the date and uh, the location, and we'll even add a tag. So we, uh, if we use it later on, we can identify the file and all the tools that have used this input as an input. Okay, hey, that's good. Let's rename it. So instead here we'll use uh, um, the name of the location, Naples, and the date, which is the start date, date and the name of the variable. Save. And we'll add a tag. So we'll have two tags. Uh, we'll add Naples. 
Okay, so now I have the two tags. Then we'll use a new tool, which is um, a selection tool. So this netcdf xari selection, and this is really to convert from xari to tabula. Because tabula is a text file, and then we can use all the tools in the Galaxy ecosystem, uh, for instance, to make some visualization. So let's do that. And what we will uh, do is to take the latest netcdf, we'll uh, select a variable so we can take the metadata. Actually, we can take the metadata here. Uh, we take the concentration. Um, and uh, that's it, we'll take everything we have in the file. So this time the output will be a tabula. So it will be a text file. We'll be able to see it with this eye here. And I will again rename it. Give the same name, but this time with the tabula. I rename it. I say dot tabula. And I can visualize it. I click on the eye or view data. Uh, you see, you have the time, the level, it's always zero because we have the data on the surface. It's latitude, longitude, and uh, the value for the concentration for each forecasted value. Okay. So um, last thing we can uh, uh, check. So here we are from a qualitative point of view. Can you see if the particle matter for particle lower than 2.5 micrometers increase or decrease over the four forecasted days. So for this, there are different ways. Um, I mean, it's a bit difficult to see the values here on the, from a quick inspection because there are too many values. So what we can do, uh, for instance, is uh, to make a, a, a plot. So we can here in some use a scatter plot. It's where to do a scatter plot um, with ggplot. Uh, but here, what we want to select is to have like the time on the first, on the x-axis and the values, the concentration. So we want to have column one and column six. Um, we can put a title if we want, but this is not necessary. necessary. Uh, let's put some information on the x-axis uh, and some information on the y-axis. So here I put a curve on the x-axis. This is a forecast time. So this is an hour. This is a unit from December 2022, uh, from 2021. And uh, on the x-axis, this is a particle matter for particles lower than 2.5 micrometer per cubic meter. Uh, I can add some additional option here. Uh, for instance, I can want to have points and lines and I can change the option, use of defined points. Can add some transparency if I want, uh, like 0 0.7. Um, I mean, you can try it out and uh, make your own uh, plots if you want. Uh, the rest I can leave it as is, and then I will execute. OK. 
So with a plot, we will see if it's uh, increasing or decreasing. So we will see two ways. Uh, so this is the first one, which is uh, the simplest one to make a, um, a curve. Okay, so here we can see already with this um, And we can see the curve, so it uh, looks like this is decreasing. I can even download it if I want. So, see it here. Yeah, so clearly it uh, was increasing over an apple, and then it's decreasing. It's maybe increasing a bit at the very end. Um, there is another way to look at it, is to use what uh, we call climate stripes, but for this we need to um, to, to make some uh, filtering on the data to uh, prepare them for the climate stripe tool. So let's uh, do that, I will show you. So we are taking this tabula and what we will do is uh, um, we need, what we would like is to have uh, the right date and not starting from zero. So this we will uh, change. So we'll use a regex uh, tool, which is a standard galaxy tool, and we will replace uh, zero day by the 22 December. And the day one, uh, one day, uh, it will be 23, um, two days, 24, etc. So then it will be easier to visualize the data. So uh, we can do that. So we'll use, uh, um, regex tool which we can search here uh, and this will be colon regex fan and replace because we will uh, search in the colons and will replace uh, and we can add uh, different colons so what we will be using this this is the second colon which is where we have the time so we need to change this here and we will insert a check, a regex. So we will change here. Um, so we have to select this zero days. Uh, and we will replace by 2021, 12, 2022. And I will copy this. Um, and then here I will. 23 and here it will be not zero days but one and I will add another one and here we have two uh, and then oops 24 and we add another one five and this is three days and we ha uh, have a forecast on these four days so we can put four days and here we will have 26 okay so we are all right so we will replace every occurrence of zero days so the string zero days by 2021, 12, 22, 22, and etc. So we'll replace by the date and we can execute. So it will return another uh, tabula, which we will uh, be ready for uh, using uh, climate stripes, which are visual way to see this increase or decrease.
Okay, so if we look, this is still a tabular, but let's look at it now. Now we have the time, which is from 2022 to 2026, and we have level, latitude, longitude, and the particles. So now we will uh, search for another tool, which is uh, stripes. And this is the climate stripes from time series. And this is a time series here, so we can take this one. Um, the variable we want to plot here is this is uh, this uh, variable we have here, which we can copy past. Um, the title we can. Uh, PM 2.5, this is four days forecast from December, oops, from December 2022, 2021, over Naples. Um, we can uh, uh, have some advanced option. So the x-axis will be the time, and this will be the date, actually, time and date. And we can put a format, so then we'll uh, not see this 20, uh, 21, 12, etc., but we will really see the date. Um, so here we will put a, a format which is, say, the year, so this is uh, why we are using this percentage, um, then the month, the day, uh, and the time. So we'll have all the different values uh, for the time. Oops, I think here I made a mistake. This is a M, B, H, M, okay. Uh, and format for putting the date. Uh, so this, here this is the format uh, of the input column. So this is exactly the format we have here, which is um, the year, the months, and the day. A, a space and then uh, the hour and we have a colon then the uh, minutes colon second and then we have a dot and then this is all the nanoseconds um, and now we can choose how to format when we plot so here we will only plot the day um, so the months but uh, in a short name uh, and the hours and this is hours this is the units um, for the color map, uh, we'll select winter, and uh, um, why? Because it's a, a nearly a binary um, uh, color map, so we will really see uh, if clearly if it is increasing or decreasing. Let me run. Okay, so it's green, and now here it is. So you see, this is much easier to see that uh, before, like um, uh, 24th of December, um, there were some high 
values in terms of concentration of particle matters for particles lower than 2.5 uh, micrometers. But after this date, and we see this is quite blue here, so there's nearly no uh, concentration, no particle matters, at least not at a concentration that is uh, uh, high enough to be visible. So let's see, here we are, we did uh, the last uh, question here, and I show you two different ways to get uh, uh, this information, and there are many others, we could have used other tools because uh, we are converting, we, since we have converted the NetCDF data, which was binary into a tabular, you can really do uh, and use all the tools, you know, from the Galaxy ecosystem. So this is it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the training and I really uh, recommend you to uh, use your own data, try it with maybe different dates and uh, look at uh, uh, the climate uh, trainings. We have a few others that may be of interest for you. Thank you.